Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, can anyone check that we are online and live? Just keep checking. So today's topic is uh, Rails components and uh, building block in Rails in 15 minutes. Actually, it takes less. And it seems that uh, the first uh, video on YouTube about uh, building this uh, block was about... Uh, hello. Uh, was uploaded kind of I can't remember, maybe more than 10 years ago, 13 years ago, so it's pretty old and uh, description shows that yeah, it actually takes a couple, kind of 15 minutes to build this block. It's pretty simple, uh, but it was uh, really nice uh, to see how, how to use Rails and uh, what you can do in so fast time. Uh, and components, uh, it's a really big topic in Rails uh, because each component uh, lecture can take more than uh, one hour and uh, today we are going just to make a brief uh, look at each of them. So uh, if, if you open Rails uh, on GitHub uh, you'll see that uh, so actually each uh, almost each folder in the root is about components. Uh, I, I mean this starting from act uh, and uh, this ones are so some of them are pretty old and some of them are pretty new. So for example, action mailbox, action text uh, uh, are so not released actually, it's from Rails 6.0, so as you see, beta 1, and uh, action text is also in Rails 6, and uh, if you will try to install it, you'll have to, to play a game. Uh, and uh, if you will start from the top, uh, we, we can uh, find out that uh, each, so Rails, uh, itself, it's uh, MVC framework built on Ruby, and uh, the idea is uh, to split uh, model controller and uh, layer uh, and view layers, uh, where each layer uh, is is built for uh, easier uh, controlling uh, things in your application. Uh, it, here we can see. Uh, some short instruction and uh, if you will take a look at uh, any of components of Rails it says that it's also framework and it, it seems that Rails is a framework of frameworks uh, so if you will start from action cable we have really slow internet here um, come on Uh, sometime you'll see it. So Action Cable is framework for working with uh, WebSocket. It's built in in Rails and you do not need to to play some tricky things so like it was before. Uh, as I remember Action Cable was introduced in Rails probably 5. Yeah, we can, we can check it. And the main idea is uh, to, to not switch uh, to JavaScript uh, too much uh, as, as we did it uh, in earlier version of Rails and uh, you can use uh, almost uh, so it's, uh, it's just Ruby and uh, you play with Ruby you can use your ORMs and so on in, in Ruby and play with section cable uh, each of frameworks has pretty nice uh, guide so if you would like to play it so for what you can use Action Cable, it's uh, some applications with real-time uh, interaction between users, between user and uh, uh, server, and uh, if you need, for example, uh, I don't know, some uh, to build some chat, 
you can use uh, action cable it will be pretty easy uh, and uh, so you, you won't see big big difference uh, in writing in Ruby and using web circuits with Ruby uh, you don't need any uh, special libraries and uh, so it's kind of the idea to to simplify uh, web socket usage in uh, rails uh, action cable itself has uh, has problems with performance uh, and um, I'll say it's a, it also has some restrictions uh, there is a project called uh, how it's called uh, it's any cable uh, which is kind of one additional layer which allows you to get uh, much better performance than action cable it, it's written in, in go lang and so it's much faster and you gain in performance uh, the next uh, framework is action mailbox uh, so it's pretty new I never used it before uh, from what I have read it's kind of funny thing it's a way to work with uh, emails uh, so you can uh, map incoming emails to roles and process them in your controllers uh, uh, I'm not sure that it's pretty so yeah actually never used can say nothing bad so uh, maybe uh, on new Ruby so on in, in summer we can uh, pay my attention to this so next component is section mailer uh, it's all about uh, mail delivering uh, you, uh, this framework allows you to to build uh, your own mailers prepare templates for mailers uh, and uh, so what what you can say about mails it's all all kind of different uh, configurations for for mailing uh, you can use it uh, with different services uh, so it, it supports built-in services and uh, the only thing you need just to configure it and mails will work from this from the box uh, next one is kind of I would say the most interesting thing in the rails it's uh, action pack uh, so the main goal of this uh, component is uh, handling uh, responses and their uh, requests uh, it's split it to two different uh, models action dispatch and action controller uh, dispatch uh, works with requests uh, and uh, on middleware layer, layer uh, action controller is more about uh, uh, work, working with your controllers where you define some uh, interaction between views and uh, models uh, what's next uh, action text uh, action text uh, is also rail 6 uh, component uh, and if you will so for what it was included uh, really it's, it's common practice working with in uh, in web with web applications when you need to build some mm, I don't know uh, text areas where you input text. Uh, you need to add some uh, nice editors, and before before this framework, uh, you had to add support for such things like uh, either JavaScript editors or Ruby has uh, some gems you can use for. Uh, for that but uh, this is just about editing text uh, with lots of different uh, options like in, in, uh, you can insert images uh, make uh, markdowns and so on and so on and in the rail 6 you, you will get this from from the box and it will allow to save some some time uh, because yeah it's pretty Common operation to add uh, text input in in your applications. So, uh, 
if you will open the guide for this uh, framework, you will see that it's kind of several, just several helpers and commands you need to, to use to get all this uh, nice stuff. Uh, next one is Action View. Uh, this one more framework from Rails uh, is responsible for templates, uh, rendering templates, all kind of for helpers you need to do this. Uh, so when, when everything goes to rendering and showing some HTML page to users, it goes uh, from uh, Action View. Uh, it's for uh, not only HTML but also XML and uh, yeah, we, we will touch it uh, later today building our blog. Uh, active job. Uh, one more framework uh, responsible for for jobs. So the the idea of jobs is uh, when you are doing some operation which uh, takes a lots of time and it's not acceptable for users to wait for uh, for this operation having its screen frozen. Uh, it's better to make this in background. And active job is kind of interf of interface uh, allowing you to use different. Uh, uh, Backends so like Sidekick, uh, Amazon uh, Q service, uh, and lots of others uh, where you uh, just pass uh, parameters uh, to some storage and other services doing all the job you need. And uh, Action Mailer we will look before is also using this functionality. So jobs functionality where you can uh, send emails not uh, immediately but uh, waiting some time uh, and uh, yeah uh, it's pretty nice uh, framework when you need to make your application more user friendly uh, from a performance point of view when you need when you can just uh, yeah show that yes we are working but please wait and you can do anything else uh, next one is active model. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty close to uh, active record models, but uh, when you do not need uh, actual uh, DB record, uh, you you can use active model for that. So not too much to say about this. Uh, active record. I think you can tell me lots of lots about active records. The last lecture was about active record. It's all about uh, uh, communication between uh, your object and the database. So it's a uh, model layer. Uh, so I don't think we should pay much attention to this. Uh, one more framework is active storage. Uh, it's uh, So, it's so one more framework here which allows you to, to work with uh, storing uh, different kind of objects uh, in, uh, like in uh, on your file system, on server, in clouds and so on. And it has, has lots of helpers which allow you to connect these uh, objects to active record models and uh, I think the first time you will uh, meet this, it will be kind of uh, creating an avatar for your user. Uh, you you will need to yeah, it, it's the most common use case uh, when you start working with Rails. So you will need some place to store your f image, and uh, Active Storage allows you to to make this in pretty simple steps. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, in future life, if you will join the Ruby community, you will meet Active Storage and other storage frameworks uh, much good, much often. Active support, uh, it's so I was surprised it's not a framework uh, like others. Uh, it's more like a collection of uh, utility classes uh, and Ruby extensions. So, uh, what it means uh, if you ever tried Rails, uh, 
it has some some things like uh, I don't know now it's kind of difficult to say that uh, if you will say something it's not already in a Ruby uh, so uh, it was so that Rails was uh, developing much quicker than Ruby and some uh, methods like uh, each with object for example was first defined in Rails in active support and no one used it this in uh, in Ruby uh, in simple Ruby or I don't know non Rails applications and it was kind of pain uh, and lots of such things like uh, present uh, check uh, on object and so on were first developed in uh, active support and uh, uh, Ruby developers uh, like it so much so in next uh, iterations of uh, Ruby uh, it appeared in core Ruby and uh, yeah it's so Rails really helped in developing some Ruby things uh, which we use and like a lot so active support is uh, not not so related to so it's related to Rails, but uh, it has lots of things like uh, which we can use in uh, in simple Ruby applications. So uh, it's kind of uh, tricky. You can use each of these uh, frameworks. You can use separate installing them like a gem, and uh, I saw lots of examples when. Uh, developer needs some functionality which he really likes in Rails and he just includes in active support and plays the same as like it like he's in in Rails. So uh, I think uh, yeah we've uh, looked through all main components. I'm not sure that we can split them. Yeah we, we actually can split them more but I think it's more than enough. Uh, and uh, the second part of today's lecture is uh, building a Rails application. Uh, it will be block. Uh, we just need Ruby and Rails. So I'm I won't install everything. Uh, so some some of uh, gems are already installed. So we will just go through uh, each operation and I'll try to comment out them and you yeah you can ask questions and I also will ask you questions so just uh, let's start so first of all when we start with rails uh, uh, we just need to build the uh, boiler pl plate it's uh, uh, just a uh, set of files and folders we use in Rails uh, and uh, Rails uh, follows such thing like convention or over configuration and uh, you may not know how it works uh, but uh, if you know that if you put something in some proper place uh, with proper name Rails will know how to work with these uh, files and these objects so uh, but before starting we need uh, some place where we can start so if you type rails new uh, rubiza blog uh, this operation creates new rails project and as you can see it, it starts uh, creating new files uh, so if it's funny it's some russian I don't know why, but my system start seeing some lines in Russian. I'm fighting with it, but but still. So uh, if you will go through each, uh, so maybe not each file, but most important of them. So uh, readme is not so important. It's a place where you write all information. Rake file is responsible for running rake tasks. Uh, config rule is file for uh, preparing configuration for your uh, web server. Uh, Rails starts, I'm not, you should hear a lecture about git. Yep. Okay. So you know what is git ignore. Uh, so yeah, each Rails project starts like uh, uh, 
with the initialized git repo uh, gem file it's clear uh, it's okay so next uh, main, thing, main thing rails creates it's up up uh, folder uh, so most of your code will be in this folder you will go through other uh, root folders and then you can uh, return to up folder so bin folder is responsible for all these commands we use like rails bundle rake uh, yarn uh, and so on so the command line utilities for working with your uh, pro rails application config folder contains all kind of configuration files uh, which are related to application itself storing some secrets uh, and so on uh, initializer for initializers for different uh, uh, libraries and rails parts also localis file uh, folder is uh, it's needed for for cases when you are building some international application like I don't know maybe you have customer who has uh, your block with uh, two languages Russian and English and uh, to avoid uh, some strange operations you can uh, configure application in such ways that uh, just by clicking one link you will get uh, so I'm sure that you've met such uh, web applications where you, you you just select a language and uh, all this stuff can be easily done uh, through just simple steps in Rails uh, so this is database YAML file we, we use it for configuring your uh, per persistent layer so you, when you select uh, database adapter uh, you just provide all and configurations for that DB folder is also pretty important one uh, this folder uh, actually contains uh, such things like uh, schema you use uh, migrations you create and uh, sys file uh, and these are most important files uh, so sys uh, I used for pre-populating your database so when you for example working on development machine and you need some objects uh, and uh, if you work in the team and uh, you do not want to explain how to create all these users uh, and other records sometimes it's pretty big file and uh, schema could be really big and to avoid uh, manual uh, entering all the data you just can uh, populate it here and uh, you will get uh, the same stuff you, you need in, in on any developer machine this migration is clear uh, these files are generated when you create some changes to your database schema uh, then leap folder uh, so uh, this folder is supposed to be used for uh, some libraries created by you or uh, some uh, other uh, some gems are put in there uh, so when you need something to write you can put uh, related code to this folder uh, so it's actually not really related to your application I mean like uh, models we use controllers but some uh, more utility stuff also uh, folder tasks is uh, so it's not so important but uh, anyway uh, you should know that uh, this is a place where you put all your rake tasks um, so it's uh, just special format of commands you use uh, to make some uh, one-time operation or operations which are performed by some schedule so uh, it's a case with assets uh, I'm not sure why they're here but okay log uh, this folder is for storing all details you, you see when you uh, run your application uh, some database queries uh, 
uh, request responses and other operations. Public folder is for storing your mm, your files, which should be available uh, uh, for everyone. So these pages like four, 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 twenty-two, five hundred, uh, and uh, some assets like uh, JavaScript, uh, CSS files. Uh, after precompiling, will be here, so they are available for everyone. Uh, test folder, it's uh, all about tests, uh, so it's uh, Rails by default has a mini test uh, uh, under the hood. Uh, it's a framework framework for building uh, your unit tests. Uh, not only unit but also integration tests and so on uh, and uh, so there could be some holy war about uh, should we use mini tests or our spec uh, it, it depends uh, it always depends so if if you have possibility to choose you you should to, to know that uh, there are uh, at least two approaches, uh, mini test or spec. Uh, if you, I don't know, probably mainstream is our spec. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I saw projects using mini tests. It's not so, it's not so cool after our spec, but anyway, you can write what you need and everything will work. Uh, temp folder, it's clear. Vendor folder, it's a folder where you use for you know, for example, you need some uh, uh, JavaScript uh, which you've got from from some strange place, and you can't use it in normal way. Uh, so you create vendor assets and put this script uh, here. Or also one of the ways of using this folder is uh, when you need. So maybe you are using some uh, non-public libraries, Ruby libraries, and uh, they could be installed here. Uh, next one is packages on. It's for our lovely web packer uh, and some configurations. Let's return to our application folder. So it's split it. Yeah, so it has uh, different folders uh, like assets, channels, helpers, jobs, matters, models, views, uh, controllers. Uh, each of them is pretty explanatory. You you understand what what is he, what is where, and uh, so yeah, assets for some JavaScript, CSS, uh, images, and uh, all other stuff for. Channels is for WebSocket, controllers it's clear, helpers, uh, so it's uh, view helpers, uh, which you use for, uh, so you can write your custom helpers for working with, you know, for working in views, uh, jobs, uh, it's clear, it's some uh, operations which are performed uh, in background, mailers clear, models clear, views I think also clear. So I don't think that we need to uh, do it more deeply. Uh, this configuration is clear. So I think yeah, we've walked through all, almost all uh, files in uh, Rails folder after running the Rails new. And after creating, removing, and operating with this boilerplate, the uh, next command which is run is bundle install. I think it's clear for everyone what's going on here. So uh, you have some default gem file in Rails, uh, and you need uh, all dependencies uh, for that. So uh, I'm sure that you should go through all of them. It's pretty big list. Uh, and uh, that's it. So after uh, doing all these operations, you have a folder called Rubisa block. Uh, if you go to this folder, run Rails S, uh, you will get 
what you will get is the question. Ta da! So, Rails, well, on Rails. Uh, so, it's just empty Rails application. Uh, nothing is here. Uh, everything is by default. Uh, you see that it was uh, executed in Puma. Uh, some help provided. Uh, and you see that uh, you've made the first request to your application. Uh, it's not funny to just work with empty Rails application and uh, to uh, make some fun. So let's see if you can see, it's okay. So yeah, it's too big for. Uh, so if uh, so, this is gem file by default from Rails. Uh, blah blah blah. Rails five one point six. We are using a SQLite. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of a database uh, database. Uh, so it could be used for. So I think mobile developers will say that yes, it's database. Uh, but uh, it's uh, yeah, kind of database which can be used uh, in, uh, in different uh, modes. Uh, like you can store everything in memory. You can store er something in, in file. So you can select uh, the way you use it. So for our stuff, we, we, we to avoid configuring. Uh, some uh, real database, we will just, just use it. It's about Puma, it's application server, uh, style sheets, uh, Glyphire, and that's an interesting coffee rails. Uh, yes, just for coffee script. So, so yeah, we, we have pretty uh, small, uh, not so small, list of uh, gem files uh, which are already. Uh, predefined in uh, Rails gem, uh, but it's not enough for for building a application for for our application. Yeah, where is my mouse? Okay, so uh, to start building an application, we need a couple of gems, uh, and the first of them is. Uh, it's device gem, uh, which is used for such operations like user registration, login, logout, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, so it's a kind of useful thing which can save uh, you lots of time and you do not... So in any application you create user model and then uh, start and doing the same things. And device allows you to avoid the steps, and uh, the only thing you will need to do is just customize these operations. Like each each application has different uh, requirements for uh, how user login should look like. So the only thing you need to do is just uh, to configure it and uh, add something or remove something. So yeah, it's uh, nothing. Uh, complicated. Uh, next one is uh, Slim Rails. So uh, when we talked about um, Action View uh, template engine, we saw this rendering stuff. Uh, by default, it uses ERB uh, format. So it's some kind of uh, HTML mixed with Ruby, and uh, you still need to close all these tags uh, and make lots of uh, needed uh, things. And Slim just allows you to uh, to not close tags <laughs> uh, and uh, write less uh, code in your views. Uh, and to make our application nice we can just use uh, bootstrap uh, so bootstrap if, if you don't know it's uh, just set of JavaScript CSS uh, 
which allows you to build some nice application uh, without any need of uh, with any need of good no knowledge of uh, CSS and uh, JavaScript you just can use uh, some simple uh, things like uh, you just know that you need this tag this class and you put it and you get everything uh, looking nice it has lots of examples uh, and uh, it's one of libraries which is, which is uh, so I would say it's uh, so when <laughs> When you do not like uh, building all these nice things and you don't know how it look, should look like, yeah, you just open, uh, you just uh, get a ready bootstrap form for, for example, for checkout for your uh, internet magazine and everything is uh, is here, yeah, and you don't need to think about design, you just have everything uh, prepared nice and smooth, uh, and. Uh, this is all about uh, bootstrap, you just uh, can have lots of uh, components uh, and uh, where they are. And uh, it's uh, yeah, lots of different things which are already here and you don't need to, to think about this. So if you, for example, you want to build this uh, nice navbar uh, you just yeah can modify uh, already existing bootstrap example and uh, you will get something looking nice instead of uh, spending lots of time on uh, building it yourself so bootstrap is not the only one uh, framework so yeah again framework uh, there are lots of other others it's pretty popular uh, and uh, if you will start building something new and learning and you'd like to see your application looking nice, you can just use Bootstrap. So where we are... Mm. Yeah, so just adding three gems uh, to our mm, up gem file and we need to install them. And boo, okay. Uh, so uh, next steps uh, we need to do is uh, so we just install these gems. Uh, if you open documentation for uh, device gem, uh, it requires its own installation. Uh, So uh, Rails generate command is pretty powerful. Uh, it's uh, responsible for all kinds of generators. Yeah, you will see it in action uh, when we, we are building controllers, migrations, uh, view. So no, not, not about use. Uh, kind of uh, installation of different libraries and. Uh, it it allows you to make. Uh, come on, what's going on? Uh, so this just requires a simple installation. Uh, it creates uh, different uh, files like uh, device RB initializer folder. So it's uh, just configuration for this gem uh, and as I said before uh, if you would like to see your login logout and uh, other operation forms where you which which are from which are generated by device you just can uh, create needed file uh, so and put any language you you'd like and device is already uh, supports this uh, also, after installing some some cool and useful gems, you you will see uh, such things like instructions. 
Uh, so we we did some some operations, and now uh, it advised what should be done too. Uh, it's okay. We can skip this for now. Uh, the next thing we need uh, is uh, user model. So this operation creates a couple of interesting files you should know about. Uh, it's uh, migration. If we will uh, come on, if we will open this uh, file, uh, you will see uh, previous lecture. It's uh, it's, all, it's all about working with sector migration. So uh, in our case, device just generated file which creates tables in our database with needed uh, fields and other parameters, and you don't need to think about this. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the next file is uh, user model. Uh, models user uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, our model class uh, with some device configuration yeah all these operations you s all, all these uh, keywords no, not keywords it's yeah params for device uh, so who can say me what this uh, what it is device Have you listen to lecture about uh, o uh, OOP? So it's uh, calling uh, class method uh, with set of parameters, and uh, this allows us to include different device uh, modules, uh, and each of them. So they are pretty cool. So and uh, yeah, they are. They were developed to save us lots of time. So, for example, if you if you would like to um, to make so what device does it creates user and all the views you need. Yeah, uh, let me actually show you. Uh, so we've created migration, and if we will try to sorry for jumping, but yeah, I'm not sure how to tell everything in one. Step, oops, or our side. So if we run Rails again and open it, uh, you will see a fail. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, when you create some models, some some things like uh, yeah, actually some. Some files which were not loaded during uh, running Rails uh, and so on. You will see. F so for my pending migration error means that you've created migration and it's in DB mi migrate folder, and the uh, database itself doesn't know anything about this migration. So Rails keeps uh, all. So the last key. The last migration which was uh, executed and it compares uh, what it has in this folder with what it was what with what was executed and if it doesn't match uh, you will see this error uh, you can save it uh, you can yeah, uh, fix this pretty simple you just need to run uh, Rails DB migrate and it says about uh, environment but doesn't matter for us. Uh, so what you need to do is just to run Rails DB migrate. Uh, I actually do not like such things like running this through Rails. Uh, uh, initially it was Rake DB migrate and everything, it, and it's clear for everyone that you are just executing a uh, Rake task. Uh, and yeah, I'm 
still using rake here. So uh, as you see, uh, it has pretty nice. So it's impossible to to see it in our stream. So if as you see, a Rails found uh, migration called device create users and executed it. So it new table users was created, uh, some index uh, for different uh, fields were created, and that's it. And if we open our application, you see we, we are safe, but we don't see any changes we've made. So if we open some user sign up, uh, if you yeah, if you will know correct routes, uh, you can already operate with uh, your new model. So, uh, but it's not clear from the scratch where we are. Uh, so, what's what is routes in Rails? Uh, as I've mentioned to you, mm. Action Pack is responsible for. It has two models uh, like uh, Action Dispatch and uh, Action Controller. So each Rails controller is represented as a URL pattern. Uh, and uh, if you, so let's let's yeah let's start from uh, from the scratch. We've just uh, open a user sign up uh, URL. Yeah. So it's just a mapping for. So wh when you put the string in the browser, you are uh, redirected through all kinds of operations in action dispatch to uh, action controller, and this action controller is uh, in device jam, and it it just uh, opens. So it executes contro uh, controller action called new in the registration controller, uh, and it opens. So it renders view called new, and uh, this view looks like like this. So uh, a little bit later i will be we will start building our own use and uh, I, I will show you all this path you need to do to show to user a uh, new page so after creating this uh, we can uh, so next next thing we need to do we, we we still building our block yeah and block is impossible without uh, posts uh, so we need to generate uh, scaffold uh, post title string content so it's pretty long line uh, let me explain what we will get so it's uh, rails allows you to so as I said, you can use generators. Uh, Rails has different kinds of them. Uh, you can use migrations, controllers, and scaffolds. Scaffold is uh, like big uh, biggest part of all these uh, things generators allow you. Uh, you 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 are getting a model, view, controller, and everything already prepared. Uh, so this is a fast way to add something to, to Rails. Uh, the first parameter you are setting is name of your resource, and others are like fields in database for this uh, resource. Yeah. So title it's clear, uh, content it's just the body of our post, uh, and uh, user column belongs to is a relation uh, which means that uh, post will have a user ID field 
and you can definitely define who is the owner of this post. So uh, this is just about relation. So we uh, just press and enter and uh, getting everything created. So we've created the post model with tests, with roads, with controller, with all kind of views. Uh, and, 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 yeah, so uh, you've got kind of all needed files to work with this resource and uh, I'll show you how to, uh, so you know nothing about uh, where this resource is located, so you can check, oops, sorry, bad idea. Uh, so if you look at uh, roles you already have in your application, uh, you will see that uh, scaffolding allows you to create all kinds of uh, controller actions uh, and uh, it also adds uh, roles to, to the files in config folder called uh, roles rb. So if we take a look at this file, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, so as you see, uh, this file is responsible for for defining which actions are converted to URLs. So if you need, to, if you will check URLs available for your posts. It's all kind of operations uh, with different HTML verbs uh, like get, post, patch, put, delete, and all all these uh, URLs, these proper verbs, are converted to proper actions. And if uh, so, we can limit this by uh, different keywords in uh, roads uh, RB. Uh, so, for example, if we don't want to allow anyone, oops, sorry, it's pretty, come on, for example, we just don't want to block uh, such actions like uh, create, delete, update, and so on for this uh, resource. Uh, so we can limit it by just, uh, what the hell, RB, yeah, I've put something bad. Um, Nothing, nothing is shown. It's interesting. Uh, okay, yeah, I broke a little uh, our file. Uh, so, as you see, uh, the only operation allowed for post resource is just get an index, and uh, all other operations are forbidden. And you can uh, do this just easily as uh, changing your file uh, roles RB. Uh, we will use it later for other operations, but for now let's continue. So we've created a new resource called roads. Uh, I'm not sure that we can. So we've looked through. Uh, Tada! Uh, we can look at how it will look like uh, in browser by just running migration because new resource was created and migrations are pending. And uh, after running this, you see that uh, it's really cool because you are getting this page for free. Uh, you also get in such operations like creating 
updating, deleting, we can't create it here right now because of user is, yep, we'll fix it in, in a second. So, uh, let me open uh, editor and you'll see that uh, rail, uh, Rails generator worked for us. It created uh, lots of things like um, like views. Yeah, you can uh, see all. So index is used uh, for seeing all resources like it's uh, so the page where you see everything uh, related to this uh, table. So show is more about uh, looking details for exact one. New is for creating new one. Edit is clear. Uh, form is used. Uh, so if you are talking about form, uh, it's uh, what we saw here. So uh, it's just fields for creating or updating existing record. Uh, and as you understand, uh, view, so edit and create a new one. Uh, it's kind of the same operation. And uh, you can just uh, reuse this code. This is why uh, this file is uh, separate from edit and new and in if you open new or edit uh, file you see this uh, helper called render uh, which just uh, insert uh, the file form here and then uh, you're getting the possibility to avoid uh, code duplication so uh, we can just reuse this and uh, I showed you that form has this user field which is not actually needed for our functionality and what you just need to do is just to remove it and as you see it, it's missed uh, and if you'd like to create a new If you'd like to create new uh, post, uh, it will it will fail because, uh, as you remember, running uh, scaffold, uh, we asked to create uh, user ID in table posts, and we've just removed this field uh, about entering user because we we want. Uh, that logged in user uh, is uh, creating its own posts. So uh, to to fix that, we need to just put a couple of lines of code. So application controller is this class is used like a, a super class for all other controllers, and you just can put uh, different uh, common actions for all controllers uh, to, to avoid duplicating this code. Uh, and uh, device allows us uh, to skip writing all non-authentication uh, procedures so like uh, like creating users. Uh, so, for example, if uh, we do not put any authentication, anyone can create anything in our block, yeah? And we don't like to, to get some uh, uh, bad data in our system. And uh, for avoiding that, we just say that uh, please, Rails, uh, make each controller uh, and each action in each controller uh, to run this authenticate user before action. And what it does, it checks that if user is already logged in in our system, uh, he is allowed to create and operate with other resources. If not, just bye-bye. And if we can check this easily. Uh, 
So we just want to look at all posts we have in our system. We are pressing, uh, so we are trying to open post uh, URL we had before. Uh, and system just says, please log in or sign up. And you can create anything in this uh, block uh, before you create an actual user. Uh, we can create uh, simple uh, users dot example. Oh, nice. Uh, simple password and sign up. Thank you. So uh, now, if you so, how, how it's not clear that we already registered. Yeah. Something happened. Uh, we have access to this post uh, URL, but uh, who knows why we are here? Maybe it's some uh, kind of uh, bug. Uh, and let's try to create a new uh, block, a uh, new blog post. Uh, post blah. Create user must exist something went wrong. But uh, we know what we are doing. So uh, it seems that we already... So uh, this seems like uh, you did some operation and something went wrong and uh, you don't understand what's going on. Uh, you should be like a true detective here yeah? and you need to find out why it happened and such kind of operation uh, in developer's life uh, when you need to fi find out find out something and uh, it's completely unclear what's going on and why uh, these investigations are pretty common uh, and uh, you shouldn't uh, be scared by them just uh, start thinking we are creating uh, new resource post yeah uh, and we are doing uh, operation so it's post request to post and we are getting to controller post cons controller create with some set of parameters it's not actually possible to see all of them I'm not sure how to wrap it but uh, I see that we, we have uh, post, uh, so we have title and we have uh, a body, yeah. Uh, and the exception says that user must exist. Uh, the first thing I, I, I would uh, try to guess uh, why we should have a user here, and this is this is because. Uh, we have this model post and it belongs to user and this is required and we we can't ignore this and or skip somehow okay uh, next thing we've already got is uh, that we are running post controller create action okay uh, what's going on here so uh, let's expect it. Uh, we have uh, this line which says we are creating new uh, object of post model uh, with some set of params. Okay, fine. Uh, then we are trying to to save this model to database. And it seems that as we do not see this uh, notice uh, saying post was successfully created, something went wrong and we are getting here. Fine. We also can get this from from here. You see, we start, started the transaction and then we are getting a rollback transaction. It says that... Uh, oops. It seems that uh, this transaction was created by this safe operation, and uh, it was it wasn't successful, so we we failed. 
Okay, uh, the only unclear thing here is this, what is post params, yeah? Uh, let's check. Post params, okay. Mm. Here we see that, uh, so just to explain params, uh, is uh, Rails predefined uh, method which uh, parse what user entered and you are just getting them uh, uh, as a hash with different access. Uh, so kind of, uh, it's actually action prompts. Uh, and then uh, you are putting some restrictions to these prompts. So you do not want anyone to send you anything and to, to break your application. Yes, yeah? so uh, you should be really careful. So you are saying that Okay, you've sent me a param, params. Uh, I just care about params which are nested in post. So it means that uh, if you will open our our log file, you see that we have this key post and some set of params. Sorry, I'm not sure how to make it bigger and never did this before. So we can't see them at all. Uh, okay, if you will see, we have content and post. Okay, uh, it's fine. Uh, it also says user ID. Uh, and uh, in our system, when we, we say that each user has its own post, uh, accepting this parameter from internet is kind of dangerous because someone can create uh, posts uh, in your blog. Um, not so uh, you you can pretend uh, uh, and uh, put send this parameter and our system will create post uh, with this user ID and if it exists he will be surprised because his blog has something strange. Uh, so we do not want this, yeah? Okay, the only things we'd like to get from uh, internet is title and content. Uh, and the problem, the problem we have right now is that when we create a post, we do not uh, say where to take user. So user is not passed any, any, anyhow. And uh, the solution is, uh, as you remember, wait a second. As you remember, we've uh, added this before action called authenticate user. Uh, and uh, as soon as you uh, logged in, uh, you have a session uh, with your identifier and uh, Rails allows you to use such uh, helper methods called current user. It's actually uh, object of user, uh, which is found uh, by this identifier, and uh, you can uh, always be sure that the current user is the user you've uh, already uh, logged in. So it helps you to to save time for finding this user. Rails to does this. Uh, under the hood and uh, you you are pretty safe to use this. And what we want to, to make is this current user, we say that, okay, current user, we'd like to create a post for you. So we are calling this association uh, posts and passing params for creating a new object. Uh, the only problem we can meet here is that, uh, okay, so, if you want to meet it, we will meet it. Uh, okay, so we've cleaned up our uh, log. Where is my... Oh, okay. Uh, so we are trying to create our post again. So we know that we need it for user, we fix that. Let's do this. Ta -da. Uh, it's a problem again. So you can build a block in, five, in 15 minutes if you know how to solve problems. Uh, what it says, undefined messed posts for user object, yeah. Uh, what's going on? Uh, we are trying, uh, so 
we are lucky and the current user is really user, yeah? Uh, it's an object. And we are trying to call method pos. And this undefined method is pretty common error in uh, in the Ruby world. Uh, because uh, when you do some unsafe things, uh, you are getting problems. Uh, what, what we need? Uh, it says that it doesn't know anything about this uh, relation. Uh, we need to check this. Um, we are going to our models and open a user's model. Okay, actually it doesn't know anything about this. Uh, last lecture should make this line clear for you. So we're saying to Rails that, okay, Rails, uh, user has uh, has many posts. Uh, it creates all, all needed associations, all needed methods, and uh, we are trying to to win this game again. Okay. Okay, Rails, we need this first post created. Everything is fine. Yep, yeah. we've created user. We see some strange things here, uh, but it's fine. Uh, and some strange things here, but uh, it's a good news. Uh, we've just created a, a new record in database. Uh, we need to, to make some fixes, but uh, in general, it looks pretty good. So let's fix this thing. Uh, so what what we know about this uh, problem is that we are opening posts. So it's index uh, page for posts resource and uh, calls somehow a user and uh, yeah it looks wrong okay we are opening uh, views posts index and looking through this file so as I've said before uh, we do not use ERB uh, we are using uh, slim and as you see, we do not care about all these things in, like in HTML when we need to open tag, close tag, and other things. We are just having fun. And here we are. We see that uh, we just uh, take uh, all posts from controller and iterating through them and just showing some information. Yeah. Uh, so it's maybe not so clear for for you what's going on uh, with Sling because it's not so obvious from first look. So all this, uh, it's not yellow, I'm not sure about color, uh, but let's say it's yellow. Uh, it's uh, HTML tags. Uh, so uh, you will ask where is the rest of HTML with all this CSS and all other things. Uh, and it's it will be a really great question, but you do not ask anything. Uh, so Rails allows us uh, to avoid using. Uh, so not not Rails. Uh, Ruby world doesn't like uh, code repetitions. So when you do the same things again and again and again, uh, so we do all all kinds of uh, making uh, things easier for us. It's maybe not, not clear for others, uh, but for, for us it's definitely clear. So each HTML page should look like this, yeah? Uh, doc type, uh, HTML, head, body, and so on. And uh, in our application we would like to, uh, so we are solving lots of problems in, at, at the same moment, just sorry, sorry for that, but uh, I should uh, say this. Uh, so each page should look uh, the same for, for our users, yeah? And uh, to not write this piece of uh, code like uh, body on each page, uh, we do not want to do this in each uh, file. Files will be really big and Rails allow us to use layouts. It's, uh, it's a way to organize your your views uh, when you say okay uh, 
these controllers are generating views uh, with, with this default application layout. So each, uh, each view, like, uh, like this, uh, is it just a small part of HTML of of your view, uh, which is uh, which is inserted here. So when you render something uh, from your controller, uh, this small piece of uh, view for exact action is inserted instead of this Yelp. Uh, and you are getting correct uh, HTML page. Uh, you saw needed uh, JavaScript links, link uh, text, uh, style sheet text, different uh, CSRF meta text, and so on. And it it saves lots of time. We will use it uh, this layout a little bit later. So we had a problem then you know, with our page. So yeah, we we were starting to. To talk about uh, slim, so uh, all these yellow uh, keywords are HTML tags, and if you just need to write some Ruby code, uh, we have two ways. Uh, first one is uh, when we do not want it appeared on our page, uh, and uh, the second one uh, we we want to see. Uh, something on page. So when we do iterations through posts, uh, if you would ask me where we got this post, I would show you. But anyway, I will show you. Uh, so it's not clear where we got this post, yeah? Uh, what we know about this operation? We are rendering index page for, for our post controller, yeah? And as you see, it has uh, instance uh, a variable called posts and it uh, just grabs all posts uh, in our database what what is not correct because uh, we just want to show posts for our user because it's security violation and so on and so on we do not want to uh, show everything or maybe show, or maybe one yeah, let's let's show everything um, so uh, we get this instance variable called POS, uh, and uh, you could imagine that uh, it looks like we are calling render index. Uh, so uh, this uh, rendering uh, template is called under the hood. You do not see it, you do not need to write it. If you do not want to override this uh, action, like uh, for example, for show, you do not want to show show uh, template and you want to show something else. Uh, for example, uh, you are showing the same uh, template uh, and view, the same view for for show and edit, but maybe some, with some, uh, I don't know, uh, hidden things. Uh, you can override this operation, uh, but by default Rails uh, is uh, working uh, in the way uh, if you do not change it, it will work uh, as it uh, designed. So uh, by default, when you knock to index section, it says, okay, I'll return you index view. And here we have this post instance variable. And all instance variables from uh, con controller action uh, are available in uh, in template in view, so we just uh, getting it for free. So why not to use it? So what we do? We just say that uh, okay, please it rates for each post and uh, put it in table in different cells. Like first one is title, then content, then user, then some operations like show, edit, destroy, blah, blah, blah. And on the bottom, we see this new post uh, link. Let's compare title, content, user, actions, and new operation. Okay, 
So we know that the problem is in uh, user column. Uh, what is wrong here? We when you see such such representation of object, it means that someone just called uh, on instance of some model just two s. So it's a string representation of real uh, DB model object, uh, and uh, you can of course override this separation, uh, this method in uh, model to say that if you call to s on model, please put some uh, exact data. I, I'd like to see, but it's yeah. So it's probably acceptable, but we do not care. We say, okay, we have this object user. We want to see his email. Ta da! Uh, okay. We fix that. We have the same problem in uh, show view. Let's fix this too. Ta -da. Okay. Uh, one problem was solved. Uh, what's next? Uh, We've created uh, ability to log in, log out through device. So we've spent just maybe one minute for doing all this stuff. Uh, we've created post model, uh, and uh, it looks like, like we have a small block. But what's the block without uh, comments? We want to uh, create comments. So for doing that, uh, we need we need to make simple operations like uh, Rails generate model comment not model model come on model comment uh, and uh, what one Wait. Uh, we want two fields in this model. It's just uh, body. Uh, wait. Text uh, and uh, not not two fields. Just probably three. Post. Uh, So what we are trying to do here, uh, we want to generate model uh, with some text uh, stored in body field. Uh, each mo each comment should be written by exact comment, and uh, we need to store who wrote this comment. Okay, let's do that. Uh, cool. Uh, we've uh, created migration. We've created model, uh, we've created test uh, files, uh, fixture file, uh, cool. Let's uh, do our favorite operation, regdb migrate. Okay. Mm. So what we have? Uh, we have, uh, we've created uh, Model where we are. Uh, okay. Uh, just to uh, so each uh, you can uh, write a comment under each post uh, to show this operation. Uh, we need to modify our. Uh, View, so it will be just uh, just about uh, creating uh, some form uh, for doing that.
So what I am doing here, uh, just trying to create this form. So it's pretty simple form. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we are trying to use uh, view Rails view helpers uh, for generating some HTML instead of writing it and uh, connecting it to our uh, application somehow. So uh, what we should see is, ta -da. oops, uh, so uh, something went wrong again. Uh, I suppose that this code should generate uh, HTML form with action comment, uh, with some parameter called ID, and with uh, one text area field uh, and one button. So uh, Rails uh, templates uh, allow you guess lots of things. Yeah. So even not knowing uh, what's going on. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, build where is uh, some guesses uh, and understand what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if we open our error, we can we can try to guess what is wrong. So uh, it's, it just says that no road matches action comment in controller posts with some strange parameters and blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I would do, I've created this uh, action comment in post controller. Let's do this. Uh, so just to Comments too much M's. Okay. Something went wrong. Okay. Um, hmm. We already created action in proper controller, uh, but it seems that we have a problem here. Uh, it still says no road. Uh, as you remember, mm, we we know some place where we store all our roads. Uh, they are here. Uh, this uh, mm, Uh, how to explain all this stuff. So uh, Rails asked us uh, to create a road for, for this operation and uh, to define it you need to, to put it in uh, config roads RB uh, and uh, it has lots of lots of different ways of uh, creating these roads uh, like uh, Rails, uh, if we open mm, Rails routing, routing? Uh, yeah, it has pretty big guide about what we do, why we do this, and so on. It's really big. Uh, it has lots of yes, I said lots of options. Uh, and it has explanations for, for all these keywords we use uh, in this file. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just believe it's really big and you can uh, find lots of interesting things. I'm not sure that uh, now it's pretty important for us, uh, but uh, I can explain you what was uh, written here. So um, we just say that resource post uh, resource post 
exact post, which exact post will get a road called comment with verb uh, post. Let's check this. Rake roads grab comment. So yeah, this is what I've said. Uh, we are getting this named road. Uh, you can use in uh, in your views or on other places. And what is this? It says that it has action called comment for exact post. How how do you know that this is exact post? When you have uh, exact ID, it's exact post. And uh, an action. So it means that uh, by writing this small amount of lines, uh, not here, here, uh, we are asking Rails to create route which maps this URL to uh, exact uh, action in controller. Okay, uh, we did a lot. Let's check this. Ta da! You see uh, this uh, this text area, this button, and it looks not so cool. So we've added. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we've added uh, Bootstrap, but we do not use it for now. Maybe uh, we will have time later for that. Uh, let's yeah, let's kind of fix this. Uh, what we see here, uh, we have form which allows us to send comments. Okay, let's try. Uh, maybe we need to make it bigger. Okay, we wrote some bad comment and press and post. <laughs> Let's check what happened. So we see that we can see params, uh, but if we do this way, okay. So uh, we've made a post request to post controller comment action with some set of parameters, but no template found for, for this operation, rendering no content. <laughs> okay. Is it true? Mm, let's check. Uh, we were so lazy to add something here. Yeah. Um, it's true. We didn't, we did nothing here, so we can't blame, blame anyone. Uh, what we need to do? Uh, So the operation is pretty clear. We need to create a comment for exact post with proper params. Let's do this. Uh, we need to create comment for exact post. Uh, we need to get this post somewhere, uh, and we see that uh, we already have some some way to get post in other actions. And we see this method called set post. Let's check this. Uh, okay, we have before action. Uh, this operation is executed before any of the action in our controller. Uh, it creates this instance variable called post and it saves this uh, object uh, post for our mm, from our params. Yeah, uh, looking at it by ID. Uh, but the problem is that we can't see our new action called comment. Something went strange. Okay, so it's a good news. Uh, we have uh, comment here, yeah. Uh, Sorry, we have post. Uh, and to create comment, 
comments. We need this association, yeah? So this help us to create a comment with exact post ID. Let's check. Uh, so before doing that, we already met this problem when we trying to call something on non-existing object. Let's check that uh, our model uh, post doesn't know anything about comments. Okay, well, let's say has many comments. Okay, let's already and let's check this comment. It has post and it has user. Okay, everything's fine. Uh, so we are saying so we need to store some where is this object. Uh, we are saying just create new comment. Yeah. Uh, and the question is uh, where to get this params. As you remember, uh, we have this method params and uh, it allows us uh, to get access uh, to what uh, our application got from uh, internet, so from requests. Uh, and the, the problem is that you so Rails is uh, so safe that it doesn't allow you to put uh, exact params to uh, for create an object, yeah, because you can uh, get some strange things in params like uh, uh, part of SQL which drops your application and any any garbage uh, and Rails says enough. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's do this in proper way. So you need to, to, to pass only those params which are really safe and you know what you do. Okay, let's, uh, let's say comment, comment params. So no one knows what is common params and if you ask Rails to execute this, you, you'll you get this uh, big guys saying what are you doing and we, let's create a method called common params. Uh, thanks to Apple my keyboard is broken and I put in 2M everywhere. Uh, what we are trying to do? We know that we are getting params. Uh, we want to get everything from uh, what is stored by a keyword comment. And we say that the only allowed thing, allowed thing is body. Okay. Uh, So what we got? Uh, we have exact object post with association comments, and we are trying to create a, a new new comment. Yeah, uh, and we have everything we need for that, uh, except one thing: we do not know who are cre who is creating this uh, comment. So let's uh, make some dirty hack. Uh, Okay, it looks not good, but better than nothing. So we are saying that uh, whoever creates this, uh, whoever kicks this action called comment is responsible for created comment. So we do not uh, ask who you are you, uh, from user, only logged in users can create these comments. Yep. Okay. Uh, the last thing we need to do is uh, is to save our comment. Uh, we have two possible uh, situations. Comment, comment saved and not. Uh, if not, we are just uh, 
saying that we want to return back. And let's say uh, bad idea comment has been saved. Looks like a plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are. F Hello. Something went wrong. As I said, uh, the next most uh, common problem in uh, Ruby development is undefined local variable or method. So Rails doesn't know anything about this has many comments. And I'm definitely sure that it was me who created this thing. Let's fix this. Uh, if you remember Active Record lecture, we had this uh, so we have different kinds of uh, class methods allowing you to operate with resources, with associations. And his many is just creating this uh, nice thing like asso association. Okay, fixed. Uh, let's create this comment. Uh, it's definitely a success. Uh, comment was, has been created. But the problem is that we do not see it anywhere. So what we can uh, do here? What is the time right now? Oh, nice. I thought we will do this in 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so let's fix this last scene probably. Uh, so uh, we have this form. We have, uh, let's do p comments. And we need to to get these comments, yeah. Uh, let's do this in a bad way. Uh, comments two. Oh. So hard to sit in this position the whole day. Okay, comment. Uh, and we want to see what was written p equal comment body p equal mm, we just want to say written by Comment user mail. Uh, if we will be lucky, we will get um, what we can say. Yeah, this is a problem, definitely. Okay. Um, it's interesting. Let's do this. Nice. Yep. Uh, we now we have a possibility to leave comments for our blog entries. Uh, and if, for example, we, uh, we were much faster than now and created uh, operations like sign out and so on, uh, we, c we could uh, put comments from different users. So this operation is available actually, uh, but we need uh, to put somewhere a link for logout. Uh, and it's Pretty fast, I think. Let's do this in. Uh, oops. So, for example, we do not care about all the nice things. Now we are trying to make. Uh, uh, hmm. 
who knows how it works. So we just want to generate link uh, saying uh, that we want to to make sign out. Yeah. But we don't know anything about where to get this link. We are asking Rails. So what's going on? No operation. Uh, okay, mm. what we see here, uh, we see that we have this link, so named road called destroy user session, uh, which is actual, we can guess that it's sign out, yeah? So we say, okay, okay, Rails, uh, let's do this trick. Um, Let's try. Okay, what we see here is uh, your uh, new link called. Hey, come on! Our, our TV is going to leave us. Uh, so it's link called logout, uh, and let's see what's happened. Zoom. Okay. Uh, something happened, and it's funny. Um, so if you would know that there is exist a method called root uh, which help us to root uh, root post index okay so what happened uh, we set the rails so by default Please open, uh, so please forward user to uh, controller post to action index. And Rails said OK and has tried to, to follow this. But as you remember, we waited to uh, check for authentication. So if user has no, uh, so if user is not logged in, uh, we can't allow him to. Uh, to make any operations on POS and indexes is, is the same uh, operation which is not allowed for user and uh, uh, Rails redirected us uh, to login uh, view so we we can get this from our from our logs yeah. What happened? This uh, is default Rails welcome controller index page uh, we've seen with this strange picture. Uh, after that, we've changed our code a little to redirect us by default to post controller index. And uh, we've got the operation uh, unauthorized, so it means that we do not have access to this page. And uh, it automatically redirected us to user sign in. And this is exactly what we've seen from from this. Uh, you can log in with uh, with any existing user or create sign up, new sign up. Let's sign up. Uh, admin example dot com. Okay. So uh, if uh, we're redirected to root page, and as you remember, it's uh, post index, and we we can see all posts from all users, and we if we create a new post called uh, the error best post. Uh, ta -dam. Uh, we want to return. So you see that uh, our newly created user just created this uh, new post. And if, for example, 
we want to leave a comment for our blogger friend. Uh, you see that it was added. Uh, so I think uh, we've covered most basic Rails functionality in in 15 minutes. Let's 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 believe. Uh, uh, we've touched lots of uh, components uh, we've discussed before. Uh, we've created new roads, new controllers, new models, new views. Uh, uh, we saw how to operate with uh, different uh, parts of Rails. Uh, we know how to create easily user uh, model with all kind of operations like, uh, I don't know, uh, device allows you to create uh, different OmniAuth authentication through different resources like GitHub, uh, Contacti, Contacti, <laughs> funny, uh, and uh, other things. Uh, and it's it's from the box, it's for free, and you are saving lots of time instead of implementing it by yourself. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, if you if you have any questions, you are welcome. I, I'm not sure that I have more power to, to explain anything right now. Uh, you mean here? Uh, yeah, it's all about. Uh, it's all about uh, your view, yeah? Uh, Rails has such helpers uh, which allows you to truncate uh, text and you can put that, please show only 80 symbols uh, and after that it will show dots and if, you, if you'd like you can add something like link uh, saying show more and so on. So it's uh, just uh, all about uh, how you see it. We've, we've built it without making non uh, non design decisions yeah it's uh, it's from the scratch so if you, uh, if I was thinking that we will have some time to to try to style it using bootstrap uh, it's pretty easy to do uh, so you have all components you just check in bootstrap uh, docs uh, find the components you use and just put needed styles and that's it and your blog looks really nice um, but instead of that we've made some some ugly block uh, but it works <laughs> so um, my advice is uh, I don't know if you have time to no, not today it's pretty late uh, tomorrow just try to create simple block and just just try to repeat uh, the steps we we did, we, we've done, uh, and you you will see that uh, it's pretty easy, uh, and yeah, it will be it will be great to touch rails in with some really simple example. So it's probably the simplest example. Yep. I hope. If I didn't uh, broke anything, uh, it will be available, but uh, yeah, it's a question. I really hope. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, thank you guys. Yeah.